Hello guys, good evening. Can you hear me, audible? Yeah, just give me a minute. Okay, so guys, today we are going to start a new chapter that is thermodynamics, right? Okay, so uh, <clears throat> see what is this chapter is all about? Uh, thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is a chapter that deals with the motion of, uh, you know, motion of heat, basically. Flow of heat or flow of energy, we can say. Okay, the term you see, thermodynamics. Thermo stands for heat. And dynamics is nothing but motion or flow. Correct? Motion or flow. So basically, we are going to understand about the heat energy, the flow of heat energy, how it flows, and the various factors associated with it. Correct? So in this chapter, we are going to understand uh, about the energy of a system, means all kind of energy we'll see. Uh, uh, enthalpy, heat, work, all these terms we are going to understand. And we also, you know, understand here about the feasibility of a reaction, right? We also discuss about the feasibility. Feasibility of a reaction. We are also going to understand about, uh, like I said, various energy terms, various energy terms and we also discuss about the various processes various processes so all these things we are going to discuss in this chapter 
we started with anurag we started with thermodynamics okay just now we started okay yeah so feasibility of a reaction like you know there are you know yeah yeah anurag everything is fine uh, not a problem yeah thank you so we are uh, you know we are going to discuss about all these things uh, in this chapter okay so uh, like you know any reaction if you have so all these reactions to proceed we must have certain condition correct we cannot say a given reaction is possible in all condition we must have a you know a minimum value of pressure minimum value of temperature and under a given set of conditions a given reaction is possible okay so the feasibility of reaction is nothing but this only like right? under a given set of condition whether the reaction is possible or not right so if the reaction is taking place then what is the minimum and necessary condition for that right that we call it as the feasibility of a reaction so this we are going to understand in this chapter okay we are going to discuss about gives free energy and from that only we can say the reaction is feasible or not correct so first of all in this chapter all these things we are going to discuss there are two sections on this chapter we have we also discuss about thermochemistry here right thermochemistry is a second section we have into this okay here we discuss about the various uh, enthalpy various type of enthalpy enthalpy of formation enthalpy of combustion and all those things correct the two chapters two sections we have in this chapter thermodynamics which deals with all these things and thermochemistry which mainly deals with the enthalpy of different types of processes okay and that we discuss so this chapter is uh, this part is a bit small smaller one than this one this one we have to discuss a lot of things okay so this chapter we are going to study in these two sections okay one is thermodynamics which deals with all these three things and the second part is thermochemistry first we'll finish this and then we'll move on to second part of it okay so what is thermodynamics in this chapter write down all of you chemical thermodynamics chemical thermodynamics is the branch of of physical chemistry chemistry which deals with yeah i'll just i'll go back there in just a second let me finish this branch of physical chemistry which deals with with the transport of heat transport of heat either as a result of physical change result of physical change or or as a result of chemical change anything will be there chemical change physical change or chemical change copy this down then i'll go back
Done? Okay. <clears throat> so, guys, in this chapter, we are going to use different, different terms here, right? That we haven't studied before. Okay, till now. So, we are going to see some new terms here, which we'll use in this entire chapter, correct? And there are so many terms, so many processes we need to understand, which we'll very frequently use in this entire chapter. So, today's session is mostly about that in the, the you know the introduction of the entire thermodynamics okay uh, you must be thinking okay three and a half hour only introduction no it's too much right? right but the thing is like that only we are going to understand what is system what is surroundings you know then what types of system we have what is the boundary okay we are going to understand about the variables right how what are process what are different types of process we have and the entire understanding of that entire process, correct? Then again, we'll discuss work, what is work, what is heat, what is internal energy, right? After understanding all these things, right? Thermodynamic properties, we'll see. We'll see what is state function, what is path functions. So these are, you know, you can say, uh, you know, concepts are there, but these are the terms that we use in this chapter. So first of all, you have to be familiar with all these terms because we'll be using these terms very frequently in this entire chapter. Yes, cyclic process also we'll see, we'll discuss under processes. So just one small definition we have of this. Okay, that is cyclic process. So like I said, first we need to understand the various terms that we have here. So all of you write down the heading terms used in thermodynamics or simply you can write down terms used okay first thing we'll see what is a system you must have done this in physics right this chapter thermodynamics Right? Remember this chapter in chemistry, it is different from the one that you did in physics. Means convention is also different. Okay? Yeah. Right on system. What is the system? It is the it is the specified part of universe part of universe which is under which is under consideration or investigation which is under consideration or investigation part of universe okay second term i'll explain this just a second second term we have surroundings surroundings all other matters all other matters which interacts with which interacts with a system interacts with system and a part of universe and obviously it is a part of universe only but we'll write down this all other matters which interact with system and a part of universe is called surroundings it's called surroundings okay and if you Consider all these things together, system and surroundings 
collectively <clears throat> it gives universe right the system and surroundings both are the part of universe actually copy this down Okay, done all of you? Yeah. See, the, the understanding of this, the best example we have, you know, suppose a pen is there in your hand, right? If you try to understand about the energy of the pen or if you're considering the pen for a second, right? And this pen, pen becomes a system for you. An entire other thing is the surroundings, okay? Suppose you're sitting in the class and the teacher asks you, that you have done the homework or not. So you become the system for that point of time. And the entire other thing, including the teacher, is a surroundings, okay? So system plus surroundings collectively gives you universe, okay? System is the one or is the thing which is under consideration at any point of time, correct? So suppose you have uh, the universe, universe is this, correct? And in this universe, obviously there are so many things present, but what we are doing, it depends upon you, Madhav. It depends what you are considering at that point of time. Okay? Anything, it's totally depends upon you. If I'm talking about the bird that is flying over there, the bird becomes the system for me for that point of time, okay? So it's, it's completely, you know, based on the person, like based on the individual, whatever you are considering, that becomes a system for you at that point of time. Correct? So this is the universe we have. And in this universe, like I said, there are so many things, but I'm considering, I'm considering only this, uh, you know, beaker in which the gaseous particles are present. Okay. So I'm trying to understand the motion or the energy of this gases, correct? So this gas particles becomes the system for me, okay? And the entire other thing is the surroundings. Surroundings, correct? This wall you see, the wall of the container that you have, this wall separates the system and surroundings. So this we call it as the boundary. Did you get it? So what does this boundary do? This boundary separates the system and surroundings. Clear? Now this boundary, you see there are a few things about this boundary. This boundary can be fixed. We can have fixed boundary. We can have movable boundary. That is also possible. I'll give you the example. We can have imaginary boundary. We can also have real boundary, right? We can have, uh, you know, adiabatic boundary. Adiabatic and one more we have, we have diathermic. Diathermic boundary. Like I said, we have so many terms here. So these terms you need to understand. Okay, what is fixed boundary? What is movable boundary? 
what is imaginary, what is real, diathermic, adiabatic, all these things you need to understand. No, it's not. System is this gas particle, right? Boundary is this. So if the boundary is moving, either it is compression or expansion, the system is the gas particle only. It's a different thing that it will occupy a different volume. But still we are considering the gases particle. The container is not the system. Are you getting it? Copy this down. Yeah, one second, I'm done. Just a second. We'll discuss this. What these terms we have, we'll discuss. Suppose we have a cylinder like this, correct? Open end we are considering. It's fine. Open end cylinder we have. Now, what we do, we fix a piston into it. Have you seen the uh, you know, the air pump, which you used to fill air into that tube, bicycle tube, right? Have you seen that? Yes. So that kind of system you assume, that kind of system you assume. The down part, we have a cylinder and a pump attached to it. So this is the, you know, it is a cylinder and a piston. So you can consider cylinder and piston system is the cycle pump, considering like that, okay? So we have this, suppose this is the piston we have, correct? Now it totally depends on us, what we want to take, correct? In this chapter, there are so many assumptions, whatever chapter you have done so far, this is the most difficult chapter. Difficult not in the sense of, you won't understand the concept, okay? When I explain things, you will understand the concept properly. You'll feel like, okay, I'll understand. But there are conditions, there are so many conditions that we are going to use. So you have to keep that in mind. So under this condition, this is the result we have. Are you getting my point? Okay, it is not difficult to understand, but the application part is a bit difficult. Okay. Clear? So keep that in mind. Okay, that's why I'll go slow and all the terms will try to understand properly. Because if you have difficulty in first two lectures, you'll have difficulty in the entire uh, no, or topic. Okay, so we have this piston. Now what we are doing, we are considering a system, a gaseous particle, which is present in this system, right? In this container, piston cylinder system. We call it as piston cylinder system, which we'll use very frequently in this chapter to understand concept. What we call it as, we call it as piston cylinder system. So consider this as the the air pump that we have, correct? Now, what we can do, it's on us that we can fix this piston also, right? We can fix this piston or we can keep the system like, keep this piston like this, that it can move up and down, depending upon the external pressure, P external, PXT means P external, and this is the pressure of the gas. So when these two pressures are equal, the piston will be static. It won't move, isn't it? Yes. If the piston is fixed, then also it won't move because and there's no any chances of, you know, the shifting of the piston, up and down movement will not be there. Piston mass we are not considering. It's uh, in physics, sometimes we consider. Here we are considering piston is the massless. Mass we are not considering here, okay? So take that assumption in mind, okay? Piston is massless, correct? So 
this pressure and this pressure is equal there's no movement in the piston right and if it is not fixed here if you don't fix this piston over here then you apply pressure you increase pressure the piston will come down correct yes or no yeah so the boundary is changing right the boundary is movable now it is moving up and down you increase the internal pressure the piston will move up correct so this we call it as movable boundary right understood movable boundary yeah this boundary is what this piston you fixed it you fix it piston you take a you know block iron block iron container that boundary is fixed you can obviously you can change the shape by applying pressure but boundary is fixed correct that is a fixed boundary this one is movable boundary we'll have both kind of boundaries mostly you will have movable one right in the same now imaginary is what now suppose in that atmosphere so a static pist piston is not fixed it depends whether you have fixed it here or not here you see p external is equals to p gas the piston is static but it can move up and down right because we haven't fixed it over here right? if there is any if there is no clamp over here then piston can move up and down right so that is not an static that is not a you know fixed system right fixed system will be mentioned in the question that we have this piston here fixed so that it cannot move or clearly in the question it will be mentioned that we have a movable piston cylinder system did you get it no doubt yeah so fix is and movable is imaginary is what suppose in the atmosphere we have oxygen gas right could you identify the boundary of oxygen gas no yes we imagine no that the volume of oxygen gas is this so this is the imaginary boundary we have in this volume the oxygen gas is present so there's a imaginary boundary we are assuming yes or no are you getting it in the atmosphere whatever gas we have we cannot see those things correct we cannot see the gas we cannot you know feel or imagine or see the boundary of the gas and but we know the oxygen gas will have a certain volume nitrogen will have a certain volume methane will have a certain volume so beyond that volume we have we, we can have another oxygen molecule but for one oxygen molecule the boundary the volume is fixed yes so that kind of boundary is the imaginary boundary we imagine it right real boundary is all these things that we can feel we can see or we can you know touch it right all these boundaries are real boundary now adiabatic and diathermic is what adiabatic boundary is the boundary in which there is no heat flow no exchange of heat okay neither the heat can come in nor the heat can go out that adiabatic is this okay no heat flow understood this however we don't have that ideal you know container but yes uh, you know we have a thermo flask right the 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 water bottle that we use the thermos that we use okay thermo flask that is a kind of adiabatic you can say right it is not ideal one but to a certain extent you can understand from that okay you keep hot water into that for a, for like 4 5 6 7 hours the water is still hot right so that's what because it does not let the heat go out of the flask that you have that kind of boundary yeah yeah we can say delta q i am not using this term delta q equals to 0 because i haven't said that heat is represented by q right you can say delta q is 0 no heat flow from this okay diathermic diathermic you know uh, wall is what diathermic wall is in which the flow of energy is possible right down opposite of this flow of energy in and out is possible yes any doubt
only one way as in aditya okay the question is is it possible to have heat flowing only one way yeah it's possible one object at 100 degrees celsius correct and other one at 10 so when you connect these two object the heat flows from 100 to 10 high high temperature to low temperature always yes understood so flow of heat totally depends upon the temperature difference it always flow from high temperature to low temperature always till till the temperature become equal okay the flow of heat will be there until the temperature becomes equal in both side clear now so this is we discussed about boundary what is system what is surrounding and what is boundary what what are the different types of boundary we have now when you get the question in question it will be mentioned like we have an adiabatic boundary so you should know the fact what is the meaning of adiabatic boundary no this is fine i won't dictate you all these things okay you write down as it is it is written okay definition is not required all these things are important that is what you need to know okay we don't we are not going to you know dictate it so fixed you understood movable you understood imaginary and uh, and this one the last one is what real you understood in the question you will get sometimes we have an adiabatic boundary so what you should know you should know okay boundary is adiabatic so delta q will be zero there is no heat exchange boundary is adiathermic uh, diathermic so there is flow of energy right mass flow is not there but energy can get exchanged okay this information you should know okay now you see this system this system is also classified into three categories so write down the next line there are three types of system we have there are three types of system the first one is open system open system is what suppose we have a container open container simply we have an open container in which some gaseous molecules are see we, we are discussing this is with respect to gases only but we can apply this for anything solid liquid anything we can apply but we'll take one reference just to take an example or or to understand things so mostly we are considering what we are considering gases here so this gas is the system right since the vessel is open then what happens the gas can flow in and out right this exchange is possible it can go out and come in right so this is the open system so in open system what happens in open system what we can say there is you know flow of mass flow of mass and energy both can get exchange because surroundings are interacting no so molecules can skip into the surroundings and can come back into the system again energy can also get you know exchange with the surroundings because the, the you know the system is open so flow of mass and energy is possible so if i write down here energy is not constant because it is getting exchange so it is not constant and mass m is also not constant okay another type of system we have we call it as closed system in closed system we have a closed container simple right but again we have gaseous molecules present here in the system again the system is this gaseous molecule only but the container is closed so the entire system is the closed system we have correct so this is the gaseous particle we have since the container is closed 
so gas cannot skip into the atmosphere or surroundings right however through the wall or across the wall you can say there will be heat exchange possible isn't it across the wall heat exchange possible right so you must have seen that if you have a flask only steel bottle flask if you have or simple like one steel glass if you have if you put hot water into it you can feel the you know the heat outside the glass also if you hold it right why because the heat is getting transferred through the or across the wall of the glass okay however the water is not coming out mass is there constant but heat is getting exchanged okay so what is happening here in this case flow of flow of energy is possible but there is no exchange of mass no exchange of mass so m is constant mass is constant e is not constant energy is not constant because it is getting exchanged copy this down See the total energy will be constant. No, bye bye. Total energy won't change. If the molecule collides, then either it will transfer the energy to this molecule, or it will gain energy from another molecule. So there will be exchange of energy. Correct. One molecule the energy will decrease. For the other other one, energy will increase. Yes. yeah that is possible exchange of energy possible because of collisions okay apart from these two we have a third type of system which we call it as isolated system right on in this type of system the boundary is the boundary is completely sealed sealed and insulated insulated boundary here there is no exchange nothing is possible mass as well as energy exchange is not possible right it is completely isolated from the surroundings there is no interaction with surroundings so neither exchange of mass of mass nor exchange of energy is possible so m is not constant mass is not constant energy is also not constant oh sorry other way no mass and energy both are not getting exchanged so both are constant yeah
Done. Yeah. Now, based on all these, you know, theory that we have discussed, some important statement you see, you just need to judge whether it is true or false. Okay. So now we are going to see true false statement. Important conceptually, it is important to understand. Okay. You just need to find out which one is true, which one is false statement. First one, a closed system always has has constant volume. Neither heat. First of all, all of you copy this down. There are six statements we have. All of you copy this down. And before answering the question, just think about it. Okay, don't simply answer the question. Okay, think about it. Neither heat nor matter. is exchanged then then the system must be must be isolated Isolated system will be closed system. A closed system must be an isolated system. Okay, I'll go to the next slide. I'll go back, wait. Or oh, just a second, I'll go back and we'll write down the same slide. Okay. One second. An adiabatic container fitted with a movable piston, movable piston. Uh, adiabatic, I'm sorry. Movable adiabatic piston. Adiabatic container and piston is also adiabatic. Will form an isolated system. And the last statement is an adiabatic container fitted with rigid adiabatic piston. Rigid adiabatic piston 
will be an example of example of closed system. So all of you must down all these six statement. All done. Okay, you can send the response now. Just you can write TF, TF like that. <clears throat> Last one minute, try this first. Okay, so answer for this question is, this one is false. Second one is also false, it's true. False, false, false. How many you got correct? Yeah. Four correct. Okay. Let's understand this. So, so the first of all, a closed system always has constant volume. Not possible. Why? Reason? Because we can have movable piston, right? No constant volume here. Neither heat nor matter is exchanged. Then the system must be isolated. Okay? 
neither heat nor matter is exchanged the system must be isolated this one is also false because heat exchange is possible with work done also right so work done possible here heat can be exchanged with the help of work done right so this is the answer we have on its own the heat and matter is not getting exchanged but when you do the work on the system or a system is doing work then in that course there will be an exchange okay that is the explanation of the second one the third one is isolated system will be a closed system obviously it should be otherwise it won't be isolated because isolated system is something like you know there is no exchange of heat and energy so it, this one is the simplest one a closed system must be an isolated system okay closed system must be an isolated system not possible because isolated system there is no exchange of heat energy right but in closed system what happens like we have piston cylinder system we have movable piston right where the piston can move up and down and work done is again possible right so again the answer is what in case of movable piston we have work done possible so it cannot be the isolated system okay the last two adiabatic container fitted with a movable piston movable adiabatic piston will form an isolated system so what happens here this is adiabatic container adiabatic piston so there is no exchange of heat but piston can move up and down so work done is possible and hence the system is not an isolated system but it should be a closed system isn't it this is a closed system not adiabatic no not isolated system okay last one an adiabatic container fitted with a rigid adiabatic piston it is an example of it is an example of closed system since the piston is adiabatic and it is rigid also right so it cannot move up and down so work done is not possible hence it is an example of isolated system not closed system it is also closed that's not a you know a wrong thing here because the system the system is completely closed from all the four side but since there is no exchange of matter there is no exchange of energy so it is an example of isolated system not closed system closed system is something in which the exchange of energy is possible but exchange of matter is not possible yes the last one you are talking about no mother that's not correct isolated system is something that is completely isolated no definition is different pranav in both definition is what in isolated system there is no exchange of matter and energy right closed system exchange of matter is not possible exchange of energy is possible so we'll go by definition not by like okay it is closed and then it should be closed system no third one is also not false see if the system is closed then it is isolated system provided the there is no you know exchange of heat or energy means for a system to be isolated it has to be closed that is a necessary condition okay 
but if the system is closed we cannot say it is isolated if there is a transfer of energy possible you understood my point i'll just tell you go by the definition closed system is the one in which there is transfer of energy there is no transfer of mass okay right when there is no transfer of energy or mass it is an isolated system now for a system to be isolated it has to be closed we can say all isolated systems are closed but all closed systems are not isolated that's why third statement is correct are you getting my point you can write down this notes that all isolated systems are closed systems but all closed systems are not isolated systems tell me is clear